I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Dead man control. Yes, we have that crime club story for you. Come right over. <laughs> chair by the window. Comfortable? The book is on this shelf. Here it is. Dead Man Control by Helen Riley. The very absorbing story of a murder in which Cupid held the hand of death. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. It was late morning and in the library of a mansion on East 67th Street, Multi-millionaire Fenimore Kingston was standing before the wall safe he had just opened. He smiled. And then as he reached in... <laughs> two hours later, Inspector Christopher McKee was in his office at police headquarters on Center Street when the telephone rang. Inspector McKee talking, homicide bureau. Good morning. This is Catherine Kingston. Yes? This is Fenimore Kingston. Oh, Yes. My husband's been murdered. Can you come? Where? Our home is on East 67th Street. All right, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Yes, sir. Cassidy, order my car. We're going uptown. Yes, sir. And how are you... And don't stop to ask about anybody's health. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> Please go on, Mrs. Kingston. Well, Inspector... As soon as I saw that open wall safe, I thought my husband had been killed by a burglar. Mm-hmm. So while I was waiting for you, I checked the contents. The money and the bonds were still there. But... Yes? The diamond ring that Fenimore gave me after our wedding three months ago. That's gone. That wouldn't be the well-publicized Kingston diamond, would it? It would, Inspector. And it's worth a half a million dollars. Yes, but the cash on those negotiable bonds... That's I can't understand why they weren't taken to... Very unusual thief, to say the least. Where were you when the miracle happened? Out. I went out early this morning. I was restless. Why? I was tired of doing nothing. So I took the car and drove until I was tired of driving. Alone? Inspector McKee. Don't be a lie, Mrs. Kingston. I'm not insinuating... But your tone... Merely professional. Now, according to the medical examiner, your husband was shot in the back and death was instantaneous about two hours ago. Who was in the house with him then? I don't know. What about the servants? Did they go out driving too? We have no servants. In this big house? They quit last night. Oh? <laughs> don't let it surprise you, Inspector. Fenimore was not an easy person to get along with. Mrs. Kingston, for your special information, I don't let anything surprise me. Excuse me, sir. What is it, Cassidy? It's about the murder weapon. Did you find it? Uh, no, sir. There ain't a trace of it in the house. And me and the boys have looked in every nook and... All right, Cassidy. Uh, All right. Yes, sir. Oh, my. What's the matter? Over there, Inspector. Peep it out from under that corner of the window drape. It shines like a diamond. It is a diamond. Well, if it is, then the saints preserve us. It must be as big as an eyeball. Yes. Well, Mrs. Kingston. My ring. No burglary, huh? It doesn't seem so, does it? But how did that ring get under the drape? The law of gravity. It fell when your husband fell, after he was shot. And it either rolled or bounced. You can take your pick. I'll take the ring, if you don't mind. Later. Right now, it's evident. But it's mine. We'll take good care of it. Come on, Cassidy. Well, I'll be finished here, sir. For the time being, goodbye, Mrs. Kingston. Goodbye, Inspector. Cassidy. Uh, Inspector McKeith, it's one question I might ask. Go ahead. <laughs> What's the ring got to do with the cadaver we carried upstairs? I think it killed him. The deputy say. Don't lead me on, Sergeant. I've no time to explain. Well, if you say so, Inspector. I'm going back to my office. I want you to go to the telephone company. Get a list of every call that's been made from or to this house in the last two days. Report to me at headquarters. Yes, sir. But there's one thing that... Now the... what? But it's that girl in there, Mrs. Kingston. Uh -huh. Now, I've been on the force for 32 years, and it's a fine education I've got about the good and the bad in Not people. Not now, Cassidy. When a girl, young and beautiful, marries a man twice her age and a millionaire, she didn't marry him for love. Oh, 
Is this Michael Dolger's apartment? Yes. Who is this? Amy Clarberson. Why? This is Catherine Kingston. Let me talk to Michael, please. You might ask me how I'm feeling. Please, Amy. After all, you did get what I wanted. I want to speak to Michael. I'll ask him how he feels about it. Hold the wire. And don't wind it too tightly around your neck, dear. Hello, Kathy. What's she doing there? Oh, she just dropped in for a cocktail. Oh, it doesn't matter. I want you to meet me right away. Where? Central Park, inside the 72nd Street entrance. I'll pick you up in my car. All right. What's her office about? Fenimore's dead. What? what did you say? He was murdered this morning. Good grief. Maybe, uh, maybe I'd better come over. No. The police are here. Dozens of them all over the place. Meet me in half an hour. And come alone. <laughs> How'd you manage it? I didn't. What? I couldn't get out without being seen. Michael, I'm in trouble. But if the police followed you... Is that all you care about? Your precious hide? Well, it's the only one I've got. Well, you don't have to worry. I wasn't followed. Are you sure? Yes, look for yourself. Is there a police car behind us? No, but... Michael, really, I'm in serious trouble. How was Fenimore killed? He was shot. And the police think I did it. You? Have they said so? Well, not in words, they haven't. That Inspector McKee, he thinks he's very clever. Well, you should have left me alone, Kathy. I couldn't. I had to speak to you. Now, why didn't you do it on the phone? I didn't want to incriminate it's... you. What? Suppose one of those policemen had been listening at the door. Well, suppose. He'd have heard me asking you about that appointment you had with Fenimore this morning. That I had? Just about the time he was killed. Now, wait a minute. I had no appointment with Fenimore. That's not the truth. He phoned you and asked you to come over. Did he tell you that? No. Then how do you know so much? I was listening in on the upstairs extension. Oh. How much did you hear? He wanted you to meet him at the house at 11 o'clock. It was very important. Anything else? No, I put the receiver down. It was half past ten, and I wanted to be out of the house before you arrived. Really? I didn't know what he was going to talk to you about. I was afraid it might be us. So you ran away. That's too bad. Why? Because if you'd stayed, you'd have learned something. Didn't he talk to you about us? No, dear. Well, then what did he? I don't know. I wasn't there. What? That's right. Fenimore wanted to see me, but I didn't want to see him, and I told him so. You told Fenimore? Yes, I did. <laughs> the great mammoth. <laughs> well, wasn't it about time? I'd like to believe that, Mike. Then do. I got tired of being my cousin's errand boy and of running to him every time he beckoned. But you're allowed. I told him what to do with that, too. But it doesn't make any difference now, does it? No. You're free. And we'll have all the money we both need. That's putting it very bluntly. Why not? He never cared for anyone, including you. You were the most beautiful thing he ever saw, and he wanted you. It's just as simple as that. I, I know all about all it. All right. All right. I'll shut up. Kathy. Yes? Did you really go out this morning? I said I did. Of course. But I was just thinking, what a wonderful opportunity you had, alone in that house with him. <laughs> Yeah? Uh-huh. Good work, Gordon. Let me know when she gets back. Can I come in, Inspector? Help yourself, Cassidy. Well, I checked with the telephone company, sir, and it's big news if I don't mind saying it myself. Yes? Anything like Catherine Kingston going out to meet a man? A uh, what? You've heard of the species, Cassidy. And I'm sure you've heard of Central Park. Is that where she went with him? Mm-hmm. In broad daylight? <laughs> There's no topping an Irishman, is there? <laughs> <laughs> well, not if he comes from the county cock, sir. <laughs> it, well, who's the man? We don't know yet, but he's being tailed. Now, what did you find out at the telephone company? Oh, wait, wait, here's a list of all the cars that came and went from the Kingston house in the last couple of days. Right. Uh, but but uh, it's them last 
three that was made this morning. Yes, all outgoing. One at 10.30, one at 10.35. And Kingston was killed at about 11. And this one at 1.45. Oh, two minutes after we left Mrs. Kingston. Yes, right. Who were these calls made to? Yes, oh, yeah, but I, I got that on another slip of paper. Now, where the... Dip- oh, yeah, here it is. Now, 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 the first one and the last one to Michael Dolge. So that's the man. Mm-hmm. Now, go ahead, Cassidy. I'm just checking. Uh, he was the dead man's cousin. How do you know? Well, I remember seeing his name in the papers after the Kingston wedding. Seems to me he was either the best man or one of the ushers. But, but it's not him I'd be worrying about, sir. No? Why not? It's that woman. The one who got the call at 10.35. What woman? Amy Clowbertson. Ah, uh, no answer. Michael Doe's most likely out with Captain Kingston. Yeah. Uh, what did you say about a woman? No, uh, Amy Clowbertson. Well, what about her? Well, see, you know how I read the newspapers every day. I know. Well, after I get through with the sporting pages, I always turn to society page. Mm. It's an old habit of mine. I acquired it 32 years ago when I was a rookie on that Fifth Avenue beat. <laughs> you know Fifth Avenue uptown where Central Park lies opposite them glorious mansions with the beautiful... Sit down, Cassidy. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, me, them were fine old days. Yep, people used to come from all over <laughs> just to look at the Woolworth building. Don't let me interrupt you, but you were telling me about a woman. Uh, a woman? Yes, in connection with a murder. The, a boy, yes. uh, Amy Clowberton. Well, sir, seeing her name again brought to mind a society page item of about five months ago. To the effect that Amy Clowberton and Fanny Mark Kingston were engaged to be married. Cassidy, are you sure? Yes, I am, sir, because the diamond ring was mentioned in the same article. How? Where did she wear it at the formal reception? I see. And not two months later, Fanny Mark Kingston married Catherine. It's the old story, Inspector. Not another one, uh, please. The woman scorned. There's no fury like a woman who expects to marry a millionaire and mm. gets jilted. Yes. Yes. There's no doubt about it. All right, I'll pick it up on the way out. Well. Oh, bad news, Inspector. For someone, that was a lab just phoned. The ring we found is a phony. A perfect imitation. You mean it's made of glass? Not quite. Somebody had a good job done for a few hundred dollars, and the original, valued at half a million... Well, it would... might be somewhere in a vault, maybe. Uh, lots of people wear paste and keep their valuables yes, locked yes, up. Yes, uh, oh, no, I... yes, sir. Go in the Kingston house. Tell the men to turn that place inside out. Yes, sir. And when you get through, take as many men as you need and contact every diamond cutter in town, especially the ones around Maiden Lane. Yes, sir. Now, where's that slip of paper with the names on it? Uh, oh, 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 yeah, it's right here, sir. The address is too. Give it to me. I'm going out to pay Amy Culbertson a visit. Excuse me. I don't want any. Inspector McKee, police. I still don't want any, but you can come in. A uh, scotch on the table. Cigarettes, you didn't bring your own. No, thanks. Sit yourself. What do you want? Sit down, please. If you're here to ask a lot of questions about Fenimore Kingston's murder, don't waste your bet that I know any of the answers. How do you know about his murder? Radio told me. Not today. Not today, Miss Robertson. Why don't you sit down? Maybe I don't want to. Would you have any reason to protect Catherine Kingston? Not one. Well, here's to you. Michael Dole? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to catch you off guard. Why'd you mention his name to me? This pack of matches with his name on the cover. You're pretty smart, aren't you? I have a weakness for matches that are left on tables. All right, so he told me about Fenimore's death. I was at his apartment when Catherine phoned. She told him. Anything else you'd like to know? What time did you meet Fenimore Kingston this morning? I did what? He phoned you at 10.35. How'd you find out about that? You just told me. What? Why, you wheedling wheedle. Shall we talk now? Pitch curves and have me swing at him. I'd like to know about you and Fenimore Kingston. I'm through talking to you. Are you? Then suppose we go down to headquarters. What for? We're very lonesome. Now, wait a minute. Let me go. I haven't done anything. What about you and Kingston? We were engaged. And then he jilted me and married that... Yes? Catherine and I were in the same show. I met Fenimore at a party, and he fell for me like a ton of diamonds. And then, like a fool, I introduced him to Catherine. Why did he phone you this morning? One to date. Now, look, Miss Clarkson. That's the truth. 
told me he was going to divorce Catherine. He found out about her and Michael. He thought I knew something, too. And, of course, you rushed over to Michael's apartment and told him. Oh, not exactly. I tried to make it casual. Three hours later? Mike and I were in the same boat. Both of us had been kicked around by Fenimore. That was a common bond. So you waited from 10.35 until almost 2. Mm, still pitching curves, aren't you? Was it because you tried to get his apartment in the morning and couldn't? No. Or didn't you even try? What do you want from me? I didn't kill anybody. Fenimore didn't call you to talk about his wife. Then I don't know what he did call me he for. He asked you about this ring. What? What you... You wore it for a while, didn't you? Yeah, but I gave it back. This one? Look, mister, there's only one of its kind in the world. Why did he call you about it? Because he thought... Yes? Nothing. He thought you'd know a good imitation from the real thing. You mean that diamond's a fake? We'll find out soon enough, if you're really surprised. Goodbye, for now. Oh, are you going? Sorry? Oh, I'm collapsing. Drop in again sometime. Anytime. Thanks. And let's hope I don't have to return that invitation. Hmm? Hello, Michael. Amy, what are you doing here? I figured she'd drive you home. She was always the lady... Get back in the car. Now see here, Get Amy. back or I'll make a scene that'll turn you both into mummies. Better do as she says, Michael. All right, Kathy. I'll be right behind you, kiddies, in the back seat. Now, Catherine, who told Inspector McKee about me? What? About Fenimore having phoned me this morning. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you know he phoned me, don't you? No. Oh, you couldn't tell the truth if you had a mouthful of it and it was choking. Wait a minute, Amy. She's trying to frame me. And she'll frame you, too. What was Fenimore talking to you about? Ask her. She was tuned into the extension. Were you, Kathy? No. She had to be. How else... She said no, Amy. All right, so she said no. How did Inspector McKee know that I talked to Fenimore and about the diamond, too? The diamond? Yes. Maybe you didn't know that beautiful thing was just a hunk of glass. That's a lie. Well, it wasn't when Fenimore asked me about it this morning. He wanted me to return the original. Oh, is that why you killed him? Oh, I knew that was coming out of you. You'd like the police to think that, wouldn't you? Maybe they already do. Well, that wouldn't put you in the clear, Kathy, darling. I returned the original to Fenimore. Can you prove it? Can you prove that I didn't? Wind her up, Michael. She seems to have run down. I think you've said enough, Amy. I'm through. And so is she. For good, I hope. <laughs> Inspector McKee, homicide. Cassidy talking, sir. Go ahead. I think I found him, Inspector. Who? The diamond cutting fella. Good. What does he say about the Kingston Diamond? Well, sir, it might be the man and it might not. What? Well, I found him in a small room on the top floor of a small building just around the corner off Maiden Lane. There was no name on the door, just the words diamond cutting. But I took a chance anyway, and it's a good thing I did, Inspector. No. For there was that poor old fella stretched out on the floor dead. Oh, no. Yeah, little fellow he was, too. And beaten around the head unmerciful. What's the address? Uh, oh, oh yeah, but I, I, I got it written down on a piece of paper. Now, with it, oh, 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 yes, here it is. It's up here, Inspector. All right, Cassidy, I'm doing the best I can. But I, I, I got some information, sir. I checked with some of the neighbors on this floor. Where's the body? Uh, well, I'll take you to it, sir. Well, as I was saying, I checked. And the fellow's name was Rudolf Liebnitz. What else? Well, that's all, sir. Mm. He came over from the other side a few years ago. A victim of war and oppression. And to think that his only reward for minding his own How business... How do you know he was minding his own business? Well, his reputation in the trade, the inspector, was good. He was known to all his neighbors as an honest man, a good worker, and a fine, upstanding character. And, 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 and when your competitors have only Is praise... Is the room, Cassidy? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, there he is. Yeah. A little old fella. Why didn't you tell me his files had been opened and dumped? Well, I was going to, well, Chief. Well, it I doesn't did... matter. Somebody wanted a record and they took it. Uh, you uh, think this can be an outcome of the Kingston murder? Maybe, 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 maybe. Let's have a look at the body. Uh, he didn't have a chance. Struck on the back of the head and then beaten until he Cassidy. was... 
Uh, yes. This man's been dead since this morning. Late this morning. Would you be sure about that? Rigor mortis takes at least six hours to set in. It's just beginning. Ah, then it'd be about the time Fenimore Keaston was murdered. A little later, but not much. The killer came right from the Kingston house to this place and... All right, Cassidy, there's no point in searching the room. No, sir? We won't find anything. Oh. Hello. Hello, operator. Uh, give me police headquarters. Have you got a plan, sir? I hope so, Cassidy. I... Hello. Uh, give me Murphy and Homicide. Inspector McKee. I hope so, Cassidy. If it works, it'll be a miracle. It will talk of the Hello, miracles. Mark. There was a... I want you to have the following three parties picked up. All right? Catherine Kingston, Michael Dold, and A.B. Clarkson. You'll find the addresses on my desk. And keep them in my office until I get there. Now it's for you, Cassidy. Yes, sir. You stay here. Phone the medical examiner's office. And look after the usual details. I'm going out for a long walk. Yes, sir. Those people will wait even if they don't like it. And let's hope they don't like it enough to burn. Inspector McKee. Well, company. How are you, Mrs. Kingston? Why did you have me brought here? And Miss why... Robertson? I'm cheerful enough to break your neck. And taking two from three, you must be Michael Doe. We've been waiting for two hours, Inspector. Yes. Why have you had me arrested? It's a habit of mine, Mrs. Kingston, when a murder's been committed. Well, then we are under arrest. For the time being, Miss Robertson. Now, if you'll excuse me for a moment, uh, I've been working on another case, and there's some papers on my desk that I... You've no right to keep us here. Please, Kathy. Well, he hasn't, Michael. Not without charges. And wait and try to be calm. Hmm, very interesting. There's nothing incriminating in what I said, Inspector. Oh, no. I, I wasn't referring to that. This memo. Good news. Well, I'm not going to wait here and let you waste my time. Mrs. Gangston, this building is full of policemen. Pity sake, Kathy. Stop being so nervous. If he has anything to say to us, he... I can... have. One of you killed Fenimore Kingston this morning. I wasn't home. You were out driving. But who saw you, Mrs. Kingston? What? It takes at least two to make an alibi. But surely you don't think that I... Well, you're out of your mind, Inspector. She married him only three months ago. And then she changed her mind. She thought how nice it would be to marry you. Inspector... It's all right, Kathy. He's just fishing. But that wasn't the reason Kingston was killed. What? Mm, look out for him when he pitches curves. You <sighs> know the reason, Miss Clubberson. Oh, no, I'm it, huh? Kingston found out that his famous diamond had become an invitation. My ring? This morning, he took it out of the wall safe. The thief, the person who had made the substitution, was in the room with him. And Kingston was shot in the back and killed. Don't look at me, Inspector. I wasn't there. How about you, Mrs. Kingston? I told you. Yes. yes. And you, Mr. Dole? I didn't know anything about Fenimore's death until Catherine phoned me. Then you admit that she phoned me. Of course, it's no secret. I was Fenimore's cousin. And you were making sure that Catherine stayed in the family. Now look here, Inspector. Excuse me, please. Yes? All right. In a few minutes. I'll call you. Now, this memo becomes very important. May we go now? Don't rush me, Mrs. Kingston. But if you're going to work on another case... I'm not. An imitation of the Kingston diamond was made. And by a strange coincidence, shortly after Fenimore Kingston was murdered, the workroom of a diamond cutter was robbed. What's that got to do with us? Miss Robertson, tell me what you know about Rudolf Liebnitz. What I know? Look, I may get around, Would but Would you that... like to see him? All right, if it'll make you happy. I'll ask him to come in. What? He's in a room down the hall, Mr. Doze. I had him brought here from the hospital. From the... The hospital? He wasn't dead. You're lying. Murphy, bring Liebnitz in no. here. No! No! No. Never mind. Send in a stenographer. We're going to take a confession. Hello. Inspector McKee, I'm sorry to be bothering you at your home, but when I return to headquarters this evening... What is it, Cassidy? Well, it's about that fellow Michael Dole. He killed his cousin, Fenimore Kingston. Well, that's what the boys told me, but I... He took the diamond and had the imitation put in. You don't say. Mm-hmm, about three weeks ago. Well, did, 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 how did he get hold of it? That was very simple. Catherine wore the ring at a house party. Dole mentioned to Fenimore that the diamond needed cleaning and that he could take care of it for him. Oh, so, so, so he took the stone down to Leibniz and had an imitation made. That's right. 
It was so good that Fenimore didn't notice it right away. But this morning... Ah, yes, this morning. It's all in the confession, Cassidy. Ah. Oh, then Kingston knew right away who had stolen the real diamond, didn't he now? Yes, he did now. Oh, Inspector, get along with you. <laughs> then why did he bother to phone that Amy Clarkson girl? We'll never know, Cassidy. Maybe he was anxious to turn the clock back uh, to better times. And so closes tonight's Crime Club book, Dead Man Control, based on a story by Helen Riley. Stedman Coles did the radio adaptation. Roger Bauer produced and directed. Ted Osborne played Inspector McKee. Alice Frost was Catherine Kingston. Elspeth Eric was Amy. Sherling Oliver was Michael Dolge. And Barry Thompson played Catherine. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Yes, come over a week from tonight. We have a very unusual story of a will that had the power to kill. It's called Silent Witnesses by John Stephen Strain. In the meantime... Well, in the meantime, there is a new crime club book available this week and every week at bookstores everywhere. Yes, it's available now. Fine. And we'll look for you next week. Oh, yes. The United States Merchant Marine is offering this opportunity to young men between the ages of 16 and a half and 21. If you are an American citizen and a high school graduate, you are qualified to take the test for enrollment in the Merchant Marine Cadet Corps. Graduates of the Corps are qualified for a license as deck or engineer officer in the Merchant Marine or to a commission as ensign in the Naval Reserve or in the Maritime Service. Discharged veterans of the Armed Services and the Merchant Marine are eligible for the test up to their 24th birthday. They are also allowed five additional points on the test. The test is competitive and will next be held on April 4th.